Father, we do thank you today, Lord, for your word. We thank you today for revelation of it. We thank you today for grace and help to receive it, to put it into practice, to see it work in our lives. Lord, today, by your spirit, we ask you for answers to questions, solutions to problems, and grace and provision and help for the days we're in and for the coming days. And all those things can happen, Lord, through your word. And we do thank you for it. We thank you for anointing and utterance for this portion of the service. And Lord, we, we thank you that by the end of the service today, your people will be edified and you will be glorified. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Uh, 1 Samuel 2, have you found that? Anybody expecting to receive anything this morning? Are you in a hurry? Somebody said, why do you always ask us that? The quickest way to not get what you're supposed to get is to be in a hurry. Have you, have you ever noticed this about your flesh? Your flesh is antsy, isn't it? <laughs> you ever start squirming in that seat at about 12 o'clock and you're thinking, oh my gosh, it's 12. No, of course not. You never do, but... Your flesh is antsy. And being able to slow down and make yourself slow down and pay attention to something that is important, that is a spiritual skill that has to be developed. Yes, it does. Um, the harder the preacher has to work to keep your attention, the more immature you are spiritually. <laughs> How do I know that? Lord said that to me one day. The harder we have to work to keep your attention. You ever tried to talk to like a three-year-old? You better make it short. Or be wearing a clown suit, one of the two. And why? Because babies, kids, you know, Grace is 10, and sometimes I'm talking to her, I'll say, hey, this way. Why? Because about, you know, 30 seconds in, <laughs> right? Yeah. Now, you shouldn't be that way spiritually. That's right? right? <laughs> you should be able to develop powers of concentration and focus and realize, flesh, be quiet. You don't know what's best. Sit there and listen. Right? <laughs> Give God time to get what he wants you to get. And don't be in a hurry. When you go to pray in the morning, don't be in a hurry. Right? Don't rush God. Don't, uh, when you go to read your Bible, <laughs> you read in your chapter. Don't read it as fast as you can. Slow down. Listen. Pray. Be quiet. <laughs> you know what the flesh is? The flesh is a spaz. <laughs> I'm bored. 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 <laughs> now that was a an example that I didn't want to show you today, but <laughs> that's the flesh. There's got to be something in you that's more power, more has more authority or more power over you than that, right? <laughs> Lock in, pay attention, and 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 get what God wants you to get, right? <laughs> Whenever you feel yourself in a service, getting in a hurry, and we've all been there. We've all been in services where we were ready to leave five minutes ago. Amen. Right? Everybody's been there. Me and you included. You need to tell your flesh, be quiet. This is important. Hmm? Yeah. Sit still. Spaz. <laughs> I don't know what that means, so if that's a bad word or something, forgive me. But sit still, flesh. No, we're going to get what God wants us to get. Anybody say amen to any of that? All right. <laughs> First Samuel 2, have you found that yet? 
I was just giving you time. 1 Samuel 2.30, and we've been on a series for many weeks now, entitled, Them That Honor Me. And our foundation text here is in 1 Samuel 2.30. It says, Wherefore the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that you and your house should walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, Be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor, they that despise me will be lightly esteemed. What's the title of the series? Them that honor me. That's where we get the title right there. And if you are somebody that honors God, what can you expect God to do in response to that? He will honor you. Um, we, we've told you this in the previous weeks, but God does not honor us solely based on his love for us. He's not honoring us to the degree that he loves us. If he did it that way, everybody would be abundantly honored. That, that's not how he's determining how much honor you get. How does God determine how much honor you get? He looks and sees how much you honor him. And then he does the same back to you. Do you see this? Yeah. Um, and so, if you want him to honor you more, what do you need to do? Yeah. Honor him more. And what do you say? He said, if, if them that honor me, I like how he says it, I will honor. Can you count on it? Yeah. If, I, if I put, now what does it mean to honor God? We, we said this early on in the series. It means you put God first. Right? It means you give God your best. And it means you treat his things with respect and, and honor. That's what it means to honor him. And if you do that, if you honor God, put his things first and give him and his things your best and treat him and his things with respect, can you count on it? Yes. This is the creator, your father saying, I will honor you. God will sniff it out, won't he? There's a scripture in, in 2 Chronicles 16, 9 that says, His eyes run to and fro throughout the earth, looking for people who have perfect hearts. Uh, I think the CSB says hearts that are wholly devoted to him. And what he's looking for, he's looking for those people because he wants to show them himself strong in their behalf. God's scanning the earth today. And you know what he's looking for? He's looking for people who value him and his things. He's looking for people who what's important to him is important to them. And when he finds those people, he's going to show himself strong in their behalf. Sound good to anybody? And so you don't want to be looked over, do you? I don't want God looking for honor and doesn't find any when he scans past me. Right? I want him to find some honor. Come on, let's pray this again. We've prayed it a few times, but it won't hurt to pray it again. Say, say Father, Father, make me, make me one, of these, one of these, them that honor you. Praise God. Now, what did the rest of the verse say? It said, they that despise me. Despise means dishonor. They that dishonor me will be lightly esteemed. Now, I know that doesn't make you feel real warm and fuzzy inside to think about God lightly esteeming you and your things. But, uh, I mean, is this in the Bible? Yes. Is it true? Yes. What, what God's saying in this verse is he's saying, if, if me and my things are important to you and of interest to you, then you and your things will be important to me and be of interest to me and I'll get involved in your things. This is what he's saying. <laughs> but if me and my things are not important to you, then I will not be interested and involved in you or your things. <laughs> it gets so quiet when I say that. Is it true? We're reading, we're reading scriptures, reading scriptures, right? Should God 
help somebody to dishonor him? Should he do that? So, so you're not honoring him, but you still want him to help you. <laughs> well, what that means is, that means he's okaying your dishonor. And he won't do that. And so, come on, everybody smile. Just go ahead and smile. There you go. <laughs> Just stay, relax. We can fix this real quick. Just reach your little heart up to God and say this. We say, Father, <laughs> I want to honor you. Show me how. I'm going to pursue you with all my heart, keep you first, give you my best, treat your things with respect, help me to do it. If you actually do that, you'll never be lightly esteemed by him. And so just stay on that side of it, right? Uh, put Matthew 6.33 on the screen. Matthew 6.33. Say that with me. Say lightly esteemed. If God is lightly esteeming you and your things, He's not taking care of you and your things. And if He's not taking care of you and your things, you're going to have some problems, aren't you? We are utterly dependent upon Him if we want to see things go well in our life. Things will not go well for you if God is not taking care of you. And if he's lightly esteeming you, your things won't be taken care of. And if he's not taking care of your things, problems are going to start to pile up. Amen. Matthew 6.33 says this, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Now, the things he's talking about are things that the disciples were worried about being taken care of. He said, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. And then he tells them, this is how you, the, the way you're going to see all that stuff taken care of is put me and my things first. And if you put me and my things first, that's honoring God, isn't it? I mean, if God's at the top of your priority list, it must be because he's important to you. And so, and he says, if you honor me and seek me first, I'll take care of all that stuff you're concerned about. <laughs> Praise God. That's, this, is, this is one of the best things you've ever read in your Bible. God is telling you he'll take care of all your stuff. This is a good deal for us. <laughs> when you read this verse, you need to write this next to, next to it in your Bible. Deal. <laughs> deal. What? I'm saying yes to that, Lord. Why? Because I, I, I can't take care of my own stuff. I can't, I can't, I got so many things going on in my life. I mean, I can't, I got, you know, I'm just for me personally, I got the church, I got the ministry, I got preaching, I got issues at church that come up, and I got these young little beautiful girls just growing, and they're going to get more beautiful, and then boys, and this, I can't even, you know, I, there's so much. It's too much for me. And so here's what God said. I know it's too much for you, but we can work a deal out. Put me in my things first, and I'll take care of all that stuff. You know what you say? You say deal. Deal. And so that means on work day, when it's 8.30 or 8 o'clock in the morning, you don't want to wake up and come, me and my stuff first. <laughs> See how quiet it got? <laughs> And, and maybe it's not work day. Maybe it's serving on a team for you, whatever. You know, maybe whatever it is, you know, put me first. And, and somebody said, well, if th this is such a good deal. Why don't more people put him first? Because of the flesh and its desire to want to be first. I shared this with you a couple weeks ago. Your flesh does not respond well to not being first. And, and when it doesn't get it, its way, it will hurt you. I don't mean physically. I mean, I mean inside. <laughs> you know, it'll hurt. Have you ever not gotten your way? Oh, yeah. How'd your flesh do? How'd, how'd your flesh do? Well. Not well. Your flesh would roll around on the floor kicking and screaming like a kid in Walmart that didn't get his toy that he wanted. Yeah. You ever seen a kid in Walmart have a meltdown because he didn't get a toy? That is pretty much your flesh in a nutshell. Yeah. And this is why God is not first in a lot of people's lives because that, that's a... That's, that's, uh, that's a challenging thing to keep your flesh under. And you got to want to do it. And we'll talk some more about that, but not today. 
Go with me to Proverbs 19. And let me look at a scripture here, and then we're going to go over to Proverbs 1. Hang out there for a bit. Come on, how do you get your, your things taken care of? You've got you to put, put God and his things first. And if you don't put him and his things first, then, then you're going to be lightly esteemed, and your things won't be taken care of. Right? Now, what we just read to you, what the scriptures we just looked at, what we just communicated to you, that is spiritual law. And what I mean by that is, that is the way things work. If you don't honor God, or if you, don't, if you lack honor for God, and He and His things are not a priority to you, you will be lightly esteemed, your things will not be taken care of, and you will have problems, won't you? Now, you're going to have challenges anyway, right? I mean, nobody's exempt from a challenge or attack. But if God's not first, you are going to have problems on top of problems, and you're going to have challenges and attacks that you don't overcome that become permanent problems. This, what we're talking about is spiritual law. This is the way it works. Do you see this? Now, why, why am I reading that? Why am I saying that so strongly to you? Because what will happen is people will ignore what I just said and then start to have problems in their life and then throw their fist up at God. And go, I don't know why you're doing this to me. And God's going, me doing it to you? <laughs> Blaming the one that said, all you have to do is put me in my things first and I'll take care of it. And then you ignore that and then have problems and blame him. There's a scripture about this. Did you know that? Proverbs 19.3. Do we have the Amplified Bible? The the amplified, it should be the new amplified, so not the classic. Yes. Listen to this. The foolishness of man undermines his way, ruining whatever he undertakes. Then his heart is resentful and rages against the Lord. For being a fool, he blames the Lord instead of himself. So you decided to not, you were too busy for God, too busy for church, too busy to pray, too busy to read your Bible, and then you have problems, and then you blame God for the problems you have. And what's the Lord say? You're being a fool. Right? That one went over well. Let me read you another translation. <laughs> Message Bible says it like this. People ruin their lives by their own stupidity. And so why does God always get blamed? Now this is widely practiced amongst Christians. I'm talking about people that can't find their, don't even know they're, they're supposed to go to church or, I'm sorry, they do know, don't know where they're supposed to go to church. Can't even find five minutes to pray. Can't, can't find an hour a week to come into church. Not here, it's more than an hour here. But other places, they don't have any time for God. Let me slow down. And so they're on the wrong side of this law that says, seek first the kingdom, honor me, and I'll honor. They're on the wrong side of it. And then they have problems. And then they blame God because they have the problems. <laughs> See, what people want to do, here's what people want. People want to do whatever they want to do. And then they want God to do whatever they want him to do. Do I need to say that again? <laughs> they want to do whatever they want to do. And then you know what they want God to do? Whatever they want to do. Well, who's God in that picture? <laughs> you would be. And herein lies the big problem. <laughs> huh? And so, come on, let, let's, let's be happy about this. And let's say, we're not going to do that. <laughs> Come on, say this with me. This will be a good confession. Say, I'm not going to be stupid. <laughs> I'm not going to be foolish. I'm going to put God first. And I'm going to see him take care of me. And I'm going to miss out on a whole bunch of problems that other people have because God's taking care of me. <laughs> the majority of problems that people are having in the body of Christ are self-inflicted problems 
because they're ignoring things that God said. A lot, now there's, there's a bunch of stuff going on where the devil just attacks and too. That's, you know, that's true. We're, like I said, just because you're under attack doesn't mean, well, what am I doing? You know, I mean, you'd have to ask God about that. But attacks shouldn't last for 30 years. Right? You're supposed to come over. Be the head, not the tail. Praise God. Go with me to Proverbs chapter 1, and we're going to spend the rest of our time here today. Proverbs 1. Are we doing okay so far? Many people are inviting problems into their lives by laws they put in motion. If God is not first, if honor is not in place, you're going to have problems. Right? And so, I don't know about you, I'm, I'm very interested in examining my own life some more and seeing how I can grow in my honor for God. Come up to the next place. And then to the next place after that. It's not about the perfection of your performance. It's not about, okay, if I don't perfectly honor God, I'm going to have problems. No. Let me give you a revelation. You're not going to perfectly honor God all the time. <laughs> because you are you. And I am me. But you can have a heart that's perfect to honor him. Yes. And God will look past the performance yes. and look into the heart yes. and honor you based on the heart, which will affect your performance. Yes. Right? <laughs> you can't say you honor. Well, in my heart, I honor God. I sleep every Sunday and I don't go to church. And I don't read my Bible and I don't pray and I don't give. Well, no, you don't. But God knows that. And so he can, he can look into people's hearts. You can't. Which is one reason why you are not qualified to judge anybody because you never have all the information. And how can you be a judge when you don't have all the information? Without all the information, you are going to judge incorrectly. And so you need to just, ooh, be, you just need to be quiet. <laughs> I almost said you just need to shut, but I'm not going to say it. You just need to be quiet because you don't have all the information. But God knows your heart, doesn't he? And so it's not about being perfect. It's about your heart reaching up and going, Lord, I want to grow in this. I want to honor you. Show me how. Show me how. And then he's faithful. He'll say, okay, well, here's an area over here where you can do better in. And he'll watch what you do with that area. And if you do good in that area, he'll go, good job. You, you made the effort and, and I can see your heart in this. And then he'll go, there's something else over here that I want to show you. And he'll show you that, and you'll repent and correct it. He'll go, good, 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 good. Um, there's one more thing over here. And he'll do that until you go to heaven with you, right? <laughs> he'll give you, but, but the whole time he's looking at your heart. And if you ever get corrected about something and your heart stiffens up and you become stubborn and unrepentant, now you're in a bad place, right? Can you say amen to this? Amen. Proverbs 1. And let's look here at verse 20. Proverbs 1.20 says this. It says, Wisdom cries without. She utters her voice in the streets. She cries in the chief place of the concourse, in the openings of the gates. In, in the city, she utters her words. Wisdom is not hard to find, is it? Do you see what this scripture is saying? Some people think it's so hard to get the wisdom of God. Not according to this verse. According to this verse, wisdom's crying out. Wisdom's out there in the middle of everything where you can find it. God's not hiding wisdom from you and me. Now, what is wisdom? Wisdom, without going into a bunch of different definitions, I looked up all the definitions, and this is what the Lord showed me. Wisdom is knowing how things work and then making decisions conducive to prosperity or to you doing well. Did you hear that? I know how things work. And then wisdom isn't just knowing how it works. Wisdom is then dealing wisely, making decisions based on how I know how things work, and then those decisions leading to my 
prosperity, my doing well. Not, not just money, my doing well. Do you see this? Um, this is wisdom. And so wisdom is, this would be an example of wisdom. It's knowing that I have to honor God and seek Him first if I'm going to be taken care of in this life. Wisdom is, I know that. And then wisdom is deciding then to put God first and honor Him. Now you're dealing wisely and that's a decision that's conducive to you doing well in your life. Right? Wisdom. Knowing how things work and then getting on the right side of those working things so that they will go well for you and work well for you. Do you see this? Um, keep going. Verse 22, what's wisdom saying? Wisdom's saying, how long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. And fools hate knowledge. Simple ones, scorning ones, foolish ones. This isn't talking about three different people. This is talking to this group of people that are simple, scorning, and foolish. And wisdom saying, how long you want to be this way? Now, if you look up the word simple, you run into the idea of naive. Say naive. Naive. You, naive deals with you're deceived. You believe lies. When you're naive, you ever, you ever heard somebody go, well, you're just being naive. What they're saying is you, you don't really know what's going on here. That's being naive. Deceived, naive is what it's talking about, being duped. You don't recognize reality. And so these people are, they're naive. They're, they're not aware of, of reality. And you'll see why in just a little bit. And then it says that they're, they're not only naive, they're scorning. Scorners. Say scorners. Um, scorning means to arrogantly despise. And so they're deceived, but they're also very arrogant about what they think and believe. And anything contrary to what they think and believe, they put their nose up at and even laugh at in contempt. Like, yeah, God. You know how you are people? Religion's just a crutch for the weak minded. You ever heard? Heaven and hell were just created by men. And you can hear the tone of it. They're proud. They're arrogant. And, and there's even, there, there's scripture uh, definition, there's even laughter in scorning. Scorning, laughing, in contempt. Ha! Like I need God. Like God's even real. Those kind of, that kind of idea. Come on, say naive. naive. Scorning. scorning. And what else about them? They're fools. Now, it's interesting, if you look up fool, I, I, never, I never came across this in my study time, but the Lord led this to me. Fools means, if you look it up, it means arrogant. And it also means this, it means foolishly confident. Foolishly confident. So they're duped, they're deceived. They're scorning, they're, they're proud, they're despising, and they're also foolishly confident. See what's going on? What else about them? They hate knowledge. The word knowledge here means clear perception of the truth. Clear perception of the truth. What's going on is, you'll see in these, in these upcoming verses, they believe that they're fine doing their own thing and not honoring the Lord. Oh, we're fine. We're, we're okay. Things are going well. And they think they're fine living this lifestyle and they're proud and they're deceived 
and they're foolishly confident, thinking that things are just going to keep going well living like this. Let's, let's look at Obadiah. You can just stay right there. Don't flip there. Obadiah 1, and look at verse 3. It says this. It says, the pride of your heart has deceived you. Pride and deception, these two go together. Anytime you're proud, you're believing lies about yourself. Amen. It's not true. That's what makes it pride and deception. These two go together. The pride of your heart has deceived you. You that dwell in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, you say in your heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Do you hear it? Yeah. The, what, what do they think? Nobody can bring us down. Is that true? They're deceived. They're proud. And listen to what the Lord says. Verse 4, though you exalt yourself as the eagle. See, they think they're high, don't they? And we're way up here. We're safe. And the Lord goes, you can get up high with the eagles. And you can set your nest among the stars. I'll bring you down. What's he saying? You're deceived. You think you're safe. You think you're kept. You think you're protected. You're foolishly confident. You're proud. And you don't think you can come down. I'll show you. Yeah, you can come down. Do you see what's going on with these people in Proverbs 1? This is what's going on with them. They think we're fine. We're okay. Going our way, going our own way, doing our own thing, not honoring God. And are they okay? They aren't. But they don't want to hear that. Because they hate Knowledge. They don't want the truth. They want somebody to tell them, you're okay living the way you're living. It's going to be okay. God will bless you. He'll take care of you just the way you are. They don't want to hear somebody tell them the truth that if you're not honoring God, you're not okay. They don't want to hear that. Do you see this? Um, keep going here. We're back in Proverbs. Verse 23, he says, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you and I will make my words known unto you. What's God saying? Why would you not receive someone's correction? Why would you dismiss it? Why would you push it aside? Why would you pay no attention to it? Because you don't honor them. You don't honor the one giving you the correction. Because if you honored the one bringing the correction, you would receive the correction. But if somebody comes and corrects you and you go, oh, I'm not paying any attention to that, all that means is you don't honor them. And what's God saying in verse 23? He's saying, turn you at my correction, at my reproof. And what will I do? I'll pour out my spirit. I'll make my words known unto you. You can see it right here. Honor me and I'll honor you. Receive my correction and repent. Value what I'm saying and turn. If you do that, I'll pour out my spirit on you. I'll make my words known unto you. Them that honor me, I will honor you turn unto me and repent, you're going to see me pour out my spirit unto you. Yes, Do you see this? Verse 24. Verse 24 says this. Because I've called and you refused. Refused there means they did it continually. He said, I've stretched out my hand. I've stretched out my hand. I've stretched out my direction, you could say. And no man regarded it. Regarded it means you didn't value it. You didn't pay any attention to it because you didn't value it. Verse 25. But you have set at naught. You've dismissed all my counsel. Say my. my. Counsel is my plan, my advice. And you would have none of my reproof. God's reaching out to him, isn't he? 
He's, he's saying, look, you need to repent. You need to change. Here's what you need to do. You need to go this way. You need to make this adjustment. adjustment. And you know what they did? They went, we're not paying any attention to that. Why would they do that? Because they don't honor God. I mean, if you honor God and he says something to you, you change. Yes. If you respect somebody and they come and give you some advice and some counsel, you heed it. You, you lay hold of it. Can you say amen to this? Amen. I'll, I'll hear Keith Moore say things from the pulpit that, that bring correction to me or something that I'm not doing, and I'll just adjust it. Just pay, He didn't even say it to me personally. I just heard him say it from the pulpit. I think, I'm not doing that anymore. Amen. Why, why do I do that? Because I honor the one that's bringing the correction. I value him, and, so I, and honor him, so I honor and value what he says. And the reason you could push aside what God says is because you don't honor him. You don't value what he's saying. And this is their problem. They don't honor God. And this is why they're about to have some problems. They lack honor. Um, praise God. They dismissed it. What, God's given them correction. He, he's, bringing, he's bringing instruction. He's bringing counsel, and they dismiss it. And you want to know why they dismissed it? Because they think we're fine. We're okay. We don't need that. We're doing fine. Things are going well. We're, we're okay. That's why they dismissed it. Keep going. Verse 26. Everybody doing okay so far? Yeah. I'm, I'm building up. I'm building up. <laughs> Verse 26 says this. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear comes. When your fear comes as desolation and your destruction comes as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, what's God going to do? I'm going to laugh and I'm going to mock. Now, these are verses you don't see on t-shirts. <laughs> this didn't make it to the bumper sticker company to get this printed out. Nobody wants to put this on the back of their car. Somebody said, I just don't understand why God's doing this to them. Watch your tone. Amen. Yeah. Always stay on God's side. Yes. <laughs> if you see God laughing at somebody in their calamity, you need to go. They must need laughing at and if you see God mocking somebody in their distress and anguish, you need to go, they must have been to be mocked. I'm on God's side. Now, why did he do this? Did you notice in the earlier verses that these were scorners? Yes. Laughing when God brought correction? Yes. Mocking when God brought correction? And so why is God doing it to them? Because to the degree or the way you honor him is to the degree and the way he's going to honor you. Wow, the only reason they're getting laughed at is because they laughed at him. Not even because he wants to laugh at them. What he wants is for them to turn and repent and then to take care of them. But they don't want to do what he wants. They want what they want. And so they're going to get the fruit of what they want. God is fair, isn't he? Yes, yes. You can see that verse playing out. You honor me, I'll honor you. You like to esteem me, you'll be lightly esteemed. You laugh, I'll laugh. You mock, I'll mock. <laughs> the reality is God's not deciding what's happening to them. They are. All they had to turn, do was turn and honor him, and they wouldn't have heard him laugh, they wouldn't have heard him mock, they would have saw his spirit poured out. They would have, he, would have, they, he would have made his words known unto them. They never would have saw it. And these people are not people that refused once or twice. God is exceedingly patient, isn't he? When it said they refused, if you look it up in the Hebrew, you find the word continuance. Continuance. This means they continually refused to the place where God knows they're not changing. And so now this is going to happen. Do you see this? 
Everybody still on God's side? Yes. Did you notice God said this? He said, I will mock, verse 27, when your fear comes. Say when. When. When your fear comes as desolation and destruction, as a whirlwind. Then he says, when distress and anguish come upon you. Say it again. Say when. when. You know what this means? It didn't say if. He didn't say if your fear comes, if desolation comes, if distress and anguish comes. He said when it comes. Why would he say when? Because he knows you got a law in motion where you're not honoring me. Me and my things are not first. And so this is coming. And the only way to stop it is to change and repent. But they don't want to. And you know why they don't want to? Because they think they're okay. We're okay. I mean, we're good. We got a nice house. You know, um, we're, we're Christians who love God. Don't pray, don't read our Bible, but we're saved and don't serve at the church, don't give. We don't really have any interest in God's kingdom, but you know, we both got good jobs. Our kids go to school. We live in a nice neighborhood and we're Christians. We're saved. We're okay. Mm. You are not. You're going to see it a little bit. You're not okay like that. The only way to be okay is to go after God with all your heart and to get off the lukewarm train and on the burning hot train and start honoring God like you mean it and stop playing around thinking, I'm okay. Why, why are you okay? Because I'm a Christian. Well, you're okay eternally because you're a Christian. But in this life, God does not honor Christians. That's not how he determines who he honors. He honors those that honor him. And sadly, that, that does not include every Christian. What did he say? He said, when it comes. Say, when it comes. They got a law in motion, don't they? And they're going to have problems. You think when God started saying, when your fear comes, they, they would start going, well, hold on. <laughs> Is there a way to stop this from coming? But they don't want to do that. Verse 28, verse 27 says, uh, when distress and anguish come upon you, look at verse 28, then, say then. Amen. Then shall they call on me, but I'm not going to answer. <laughs> They'll seek me early, but they're not going to find me. Is this the Bible? Does God answer everybody that calls? <laughs> Does God let everybody find him that seeks him for help? And, hmm. -mm. How come? I'm mad at God. I don't understand why they're hurting and they're in anguish and they're calling for help, but God's not going to help them. I don't, I don't like this verse. Always stay on God's side. <laughs> so yeah, God's right. I'm, you know, he's not answering them was the right thing to do. <laughs> How do I know that? Because that's what God did. So it was right. How come God didn't answer them? Verse 29. For. For means because. They're going to call on me and I'm not going to answer. They're going to seek me and not find me. And this is why. Because they hated knowledge and they did not choose the fear of the Lord. Do you know what the fear of the Lord is? Honor. Reverence. Respect. And that right there is why they're not getting answered. Because here's what they want. They're in trouble and all they want is out of the trouble. That's all they want. They don't want to change. They just want God to help them get out of the trouble. Amen. And the moment they get out of trouble, they're going to go back to not honoring God. And this is what a lot of people want. They want to pay no attention to God, but I also want his help. <laughs> right? People in this country are guilty of it. Push God out of government. Push him out of schools. Don't say this. Don't pray that. And then when stuff starts going bad, people go, let's pray. <laughs> well, you can't pray. Right. Maybe we can, but you can't pray. Because hmm. you don't have it. You push God out. Yeah. And, and God will not answer you. You ought to be thankful that we're here. <laughs> yeah. 
Because he'll answer us. Amen. Those of us that are honoring him. This is what people want. They, they, they want to pay no attention to God. Too busy. No time. Activities. Life. Career. Job. Kids. So busy. I, I'm looking for a church, but a short one. Give me a short one. <laughs> Something short. <laughs> I'm, I'm not against the shorter service, but if that's what you're looking for in a church, you've got some bigger problems in the heart that need to be adjusted. That you might need to come to a long service to get them fixed. <laughs> then go, <laughs> I don't know. God, God will figure that out. People, no time for God. And then, and then they get in trouble. God help us. And then God doesn't help them. They go, God, I don't know why you're not helping. The first thing these people should have did before they asked him to help, they should have repented. They should have said, Lord, this is our, this is our own dumb fault for not honoring you and pushing your stuff aside. And had they done that, they would have saw mercy on the clouds yeah. pouring out over them. Yes. Yes. God is so merciful. There's a guy in the Old Testament. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to think of his name right now. I think he was like burning babies alive. Shedding innocent blood. And he repented and God gave him mercy. God is so merciful. And so, but again, they, they don't want to repent. And this, many people are in the same boat. They, they don't want to honor him, don't want to pay any attention to him, and yet they expect him to help. And then when he doesn't help, they're accusatory. Why didn't you help? It's not how it works. I know we've been in, in a church today, in a lot of modern churches today, I know we've been lied to. And we can add, you, people are acting like, you can just do whatever you want. And because God's a God of love and grace and mercy, he'll help you no matter what you do. If your heart is right, and you are serious about following him, yes, you can make some mistakes and get some grace and get some mercy and get some help, but if all you want is out of the help so that you can go back to comfortably ignoring him, it's not supposed to be comfortable when you're ignoring him. Amen. The way of the transgressor is hard. It's supposed to be hard. The reason it wasn't hard before that is because he was so merciful to you. It's not supposed to be easy when God's sixth place in your life. Behind your career, your family, your job, your activities, your hobbies, and everything else you do. You have a law in motion that says you're going to have problems. And then you want to pray and have God stop the problems. But the big problem is you still have the law in motion. And so all that's going to happen is he's going to get that problem off of you. And then you know what's coming on the next What's the thing called? Conveyor belt. You got more problems coming. You got to change the law and get the belt turned off. Or <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come on. That's good. God is not mean. God is not hard to please. God is loving. And he is kind. And he is gracious. And exceedingly patient. And also, he is not a pushover. He is God, not you, yeah. not me. And he is the one who says it is this way, not you. And that's what people want. They want to be God. They want it the way they want it. And what do they want? I'm too busy, no time, but God, you still help me too. I want to do what I want to do, and then I want you to do what I want you to do. Well, this is a wonderful thing, but it's not true. And so, no, you can't use the love of God and the grace of God for your own carnality and laziness because you don't want to put his things first. You don't have to perfectly honor him in every way and do everything perfect, but your heart in here better be right about it. And you might make some mistakes outwardly, but if your heart's right when you make some mistakes, you go, Lord, I repent. I missed it over here. I didn't honor you the way I should have. Forgive me. And, and then you'll get mercy and grace and God will just keep honoring you. 
God will honor you in spite of your mistakes because he will look right past your mistakes and look at your heart. And if your heart is serious about honoring him, he'll look in there and find out. And if your heart is not serious about honoring him, he'll look right into you and find out. And it's not even hard. You just, you just go in there. You can do it in about five minutes. You can make the... <laughs> I heard Kenneth Hagin say this one time. He said, uh, the Lord said, the reason that you're not enjoying... Uh, uh, abundance in your fi he was having problems financially so the reason you're not enjoying my will for your finances is because uh, you're not willing God was showing him that verse the willing and obedient shall eat the good of the land and he goes well Lord I'm not eating the good of the land he said we're living in lack and the Lord goes that's because you're not willing and he said in his book he was writing he said, and he said I took about three seconds to get willing yeah. <laughs> I just stopped and said well I'm willing now I'm done being unwilling. And that's about how long it takes to get your heart right where honor is concerned. Um, come on, God didn't answer, did he? What did he say? He said, I'm, I'm not going to answer. Put Psalm 91.15 on the screen. 91.14. Now those people, he didn't answer. Right? He said, you're going to call, but I'm not going to answer you. Come on, say, that's not going to be me. How about this guy, though? Because he set his love upon me, his love doesn't just mean he casually loves God. It's saying because he set his affection and honor on me, therefore I'll deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known, if you look up that word, he's known, he's honored, he's respected my name. Keep going. <laughs> Verse 15, he will call upon me and I'm going to answer this one. What's the difference between him and them? Honor. Right? And so God is a God who answers. Right? <laughs> He'll answer people that honor him. All right, let's go back to Proverbs 1, and I'm looking for a place to stop here. Proverbs 1. Let's read the rest of these verses. Verse 29 says, For that they hated knowledge, did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would have none of my counsel, despised all my reproof, verse 31. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way. Say their own way. Their own way. And be filled with their own devices. Say their own devices. Their own devices. For, turning, for the turning away of the simple. Turning away from what? Turning away from God and what He wants to their way and what they want. That is the opposite of seeking first the kingdom. That's the opposite of that. Turning away from what God wants, turning to what they, to what they want. And look what it says here, verse 32. The turning away of the simple. Say simple. Simple, simple means naive. Say naive they actually think they're okay. If you keep going, and it says, and the prosperity of the fool shall destroy them. This word prosperity, if you look it up in the Hebrew, it means security. Either genuine or false security. Can you be genuinely secure? You can, can't you? You can also be falsely secure where you think you're okay but you're not okay yeah. right yeah. and that's what it's talking about it's talking about their false sense of security and their naivety has them thinking they're okay and that's the very thing that destroys them thinking you're okay when you're not okay is what will destroy you a lot of people, a lot of believers, they think, they think I'm, I'm, I'm okay. And I'm, I'm not talking about eternally. If you're saved, you're secure eternally. As long as you hold on to what you believe, you'll be saved. I'm talking about down here. Yes. This place down here, it's dangerous. Yeah. It's full of the curse, full of death, full of darkness. I mean, do you know how many different ways you could die before the end of the day? Yeah. <laughs> you, need some, you need some good protection, don't you? Yeah. This place is dangerous. And a lot of people think, well, 
I'm, I'm okay because I'm saved. And I love God. I'm quoting it because people use that very broadly. And I'm a good Christian. What does that mean? Uh, you know, I don't yell at people who cut in front of me at Walmart. And I stumble down to church every few months. And if I can find my Bible, I read it for about five minutes every three months. And, but I'm okay because God loves me. If God was protecting everybody he loved, every Christian would be protected from evil. That's not what makes you okay. I'm getting ready to give you a verse, so just hang on. And this is why the devil's taking people out, because they think they're okay when they're not okay. And if God is not first, and if you do not honor him, and if he is not the priority in your life, you're not okay. Now, if you know people like this, ask God to give them mercy. Ask God to give them time. Give them space. Help them to repent. Help them to change. Don't, don't get in fear about it. But the only way to be secure in this life is for God to be your keeper. Yes. Yes, Lord. I'm telling you, He can keep you. You can be so kept, the kept people call you kept. Um, the, devil, the devil came to Job one time and, and he, he was talking to God about Job and he said, you've put a hedge around him and around all his house, and around all his stuff. That's being kept, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the devil said, I couldn't get to him, couldn't get to his house, couldn't get to his stuff. you got a hedge around, around everything. The psalmist said in Psalm 91, a thousand may fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it ain't coming near me. Right. I'm telling you right now, brother, sister, that's being kept. Yeah. Yes. Right? Psalm 121 talked about how the, uh, the, Lord is my, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this day forward. Can God keep you? And he can keep you in every area of your life. He can keep your marriage and keep your finances and keep your kids and keep even your possessions. He can protect you from stuff and keep stuff off of you. He can. The big question is, who is he doing that for? It's clearly not all Christians because you can see left and right, Christians are not enjoying that kind of protection. Look at verse 33 and you'll get your answer. What did the previous verse say? The previous verse talked about the, the, their false sense of security. That's what destroys them thinking they're okay when they're not okay. They're naive. Verse 33 says this, but, say but. but. <laughs> Whoso hearkens unto me yes. will dwell safely. Yes. Can you be secure in this life? Yes. Can you be safe? Yes. Can you be kept and protected and yes. hedged around? I'm talking hedged around, man. I'm hedged in and Stuff hedged in and kids hedged in. You can be protected. You can be safe. You can be so safe that you are quiet from the fear of evil. Yeah. That, that you don't, it's, like you ain't even concerned about it. <laughs> Why? The Lord is my keeper. Yeah, that's right. Evil all around. I mean, how can you live down here and not be afraid of something? I got good protection. That's right. That's right. The Lord is my keeper. And he can keep stuff off me. It can be happening to 11,000 people around me, but not come near me. Mm. It can be this way. But who does he do it for? Th this is where we need to lay hold of this. He's not doing this for every believer. He wants to. And we'll get into it next week. Dishonor shuts him out. Keeps him from doing what he wants to do. Who does he do it for? The person, the word hearken also means regards me. 
person that honors me enough to pay attention to what I say, that one will be safe. Let me read this to you out some other translations. It says, those who pay attention to me in the complete Jewish Bible will live securely, untroubled by fear of misfortune. The CV says, but if you listen to me, you will be safe and secure without fear of disaster. The Message Bible says, first, pay attention to me, then relax. You are under, I'm sorry, relax. Now you can take it easy. You're in good hands. What was first though? Listen to me. And to listen to me, you have to honor me enough to pay attention. The voice translation says, those who listen to me now will live in divine protection, under divine protection, they can rest knowing they are out of harm's way. See, what should be happening is, a lot of times we've quoted, the, a thousand may fall at my side, 10,000 on my right hand, it won't come near me, I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, I abide under the shadow. You can quote all that, but if God's not first in your life, if you don't honor Him, you have no right to be confident about that. Because the guy that was writing that in Psalm 91 was a guy that took his affection and set it on God and said, God, I love you. I'm going after you with all my heart. I'm going to pursue you. I'm going to live for you. If it costs me everything, I'm honoring you. That's the person that can say, a thousand may fall at my side, 10,000 are right hand. It ain't coming near me. No, I'm one of them. You need to tell the devil next time he comes to you and says, I'm going to take you out. You need to say, devil, I'm one of them. And you know what that means. Not one of them Christians. No, nope, I'm one of those too. But I'm one of them that honor him. And, and I'm telling you, this is what's been hitting me so strong. When you truly do honor him, there should be some confidence coming out of you about him taking care of you. Yes. You can be confident about it. Yes. Can you say amen to this? Amen. Go ahead and stand up with me today. Oh, Is this earth a dangerous place? Yes. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And you don't have to be old to die. Yes, right? <laughs> right? Yes. You can go young. You can go early. The only way to be okay in the earth is for God to be your keeper. And the only ones God is keeping like that are them that honor him. And so we need to not be deceived and think, well, I'm okay because I'm a Christian or I'm okay because I love God. No, no, I'm okay because I honor God and I listen to him. And he said that the person that listens to me is safe and doesn't have to fear any evil. The person that honors me person that puts me first, person that values me and my things. That's the one that can boldly declare, I will keep them and honor them. Can you say amen to this? There, there are so many answers to so many things uh, in what the Lord's telling us. Hear people, and you don't need to answer for somebody else, and it's not your job to answer why everything happens to every person on the earth. Truth is, you don't know why. So don't act like you do. But I know this. The people that honor God, the people that are going to listen to what he says, he said they're safe and don't have to fear any evil. That's me. How about you? Well, Father, we thank you for that today. Let's, uh, let's do a little uh, repenting here. Anybody want to do some repenting? <laughs> oh, repenting is, repentance is a gift. It's a gift. One of the greatest gifts God has given you is the gift to be able to make a mistake and then be treated like you didn't make a mistake. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. That's the best thing you ever opened under the Christmas tree. Um, if you were listening today or you've been listening the past couple of weeks and you feel like, man, I'm, I'm making some, some mistakes and I'm not, there's some areas where I want to honor him more. I, I've kind of let this slip. Um, if you, if you recognize that, that, best thing to do is just repent right now. And if you acknowledge it and repent, 
God keeps you from that moment on. If your heart is repentant towards him, if you want to get it right, if you want to honor him, if your heart is right, you are safe, you are protected, you're kept. And so don't feel like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm vulnerable to the enemy because I'm not doing this or I'm not doing that. No, just repent now. Get your heart right. Take the steps you need to take. But the moment you repent, the blood washes you. And the moment the blood washes you, you're clean. And the moment you're clean, you're kept. You're kept as long as you're serious about honoring God and getting it right. You're okay. Come on, say, I'm okay. I'm okay. Let's pray it together. Um, maybe, maybe you can't think of it. Maybe you're so perfect, you can't think of anything you need to improve. <laughs> but uh, let's all just pray it together. Say, Father, Lord, I repent. Any dishonor I displayed in my life. Father, that's not my heart. And that's not what I want to do. I want you to be first. I want to give you my best. I want to treat your things with respect. Help me, Lord, today and in the coming days to grow in my honor for you to grow in my respect for you and your things. Show me any corrections that I need to make. And thank you in advance for grace and help to make adjustments, to make the corrections. I receive today my forgiveness. I receive today the cleansing of the blood and I'm washed and I'm sanctified and I thank you for it in Jesus name and I expect because I'm one of those them that are endeavoring to honor you with all my heart I expect to be kept to be cared for all of my days I expect that you will be working in my behalf, in my marriage, in my family, with my kids, with my grandkids, in my finances, all the time, taking care of me, watching over me, because I'm one of those them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can you say thank you, Lord?